Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Kadabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Moist Underwater Technologies mod, which is being made by form user Jatwa. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to allow you to explore underwater and make submarines, and that's always fun. So let's jump into the space plane hangar and have a look at how this all works. Now we actually have looked at at, uh, I believe two or three other mods that do the same sort of thing in the past but I do always like seeing how different mod makers take on the same task in this case of course underwater exploration and I I'm not 100% sure on this but I do believe this one may currently be the only one updated to 1.6.1. I could be incorrect on that, so don't quote me there, but I haven't seen any of the others in quite some time. But let's start by grabbing a Mark 1 command pod for size comparison's sake, and then go to our mod filter, just leaving on JDSA. And our first part we're gonna have a look at here is the probe conning tower. And it's a pretty cool part. I do like it very much. My one problem, as you can kind of see here, is its attachment point. Even though it is on the bottom, you can see there. It kind of only attaches to things at like a 90 degree angle, which is kind of strange. But hey, with the move and rotate tools, you can, you know, plop things down, rotate them, and get to working order pretty quickly. But it is kind of an odd little thing. Hopefully that does get fixed. Otherwise, it is, well, an unmanned command pod with a built-in data transmitter, reaction wheel, a research, uh, not research, resource converter for a dump ballast and ballast exhaust vent. Things we'll talk about in a little bit once we go over how it all works. And then also an SAS and a 5,000 electric charge. OA is handy, but let's pop that off that beautiful submarine conning tower and head then to the engines category where we have five different water-based engines the first being the holy ship which oh that's named for a good reason first off though let's take a look at the model there a very interesting looking thing not exactly stock alike but you know what it's kind of a cool looking design nonetheless a very interesting and it does produce a whole lot of thrust. Now it is one of those uh, engines where you have two different modes. At low power, you'll produce 560 kilonewtons of thrust using liquid intake rather than jet engine air intake, as well as electric charge and using a tiny amount at 0.19 per second. Now, you can overcharge it to 5,000 freaking kilonewtons. Oh boy, that's a lot of thrust underwater but using a lot more electric charge at 19.12 per second. So uh, yeah, whichever speed you like, it's a, it can be a lot. Now besides that, it has built-in RCS and its own built-in liquid intake, so you don't have to worry about having some other intake on the ship for the engine. Now the rest of these engines, I'll just go ahead and mention now, they also do all have RCS as well as the liquid intake, so I won't really mention that for the rest of them. Other than that, the difference is either thrust or size. Now in terms of different thrust, we have the CUDA here, which is the same sized engine, but this one only has that much lower 560 kilonewtons of thrust rather than the Holy Ship's 5000 alternative. But other than that, pretty much identical engine. We then have the Sea Otter, which is a little bit bigger of an engine, there you go, and will produce 1100 kilonewtons of thrust. We then have the Whale Fin, which is even larger, and will produce 1000 1,200 kilonewtons of thrust, and then we have the much smaller little bit, which only produces 280 kilonewtons of thrust, which is quite a nice little thing for building a little mini sub. Could be cool for a uh, small probe to go out into the cosmos. Very nice. Now, after that, uh, like I said, they all do have their own little built-in RCS, which just to show you is those black little dots on the rear of the engine, and they are, like with the engine itself, 
liquid intake powered, so rather than mono propellant. And if you would like more of those liquid based thrusters, well, we just have to go to Command and Control next, where we can actually plop down a liquid thruster block, which just like the RCS thrusters on the engine, will use liquid intake for their power, and these blocks also do have their own liquid intake, so you don't have to worry about them taking away from the engine, which is quite good, and they'll just power themselves so long, of course, as you're underwater. They have to have liquid to take in to actually function. Now, the last remaining two parts are down here in Utility, where we have the liquid intake vent, and then a larger Mark II liquid intake vent. Now, here's the thing about these. These liquid intakes are different from the liquid intakes on the engine and the RCS block. If we just kind of bring up this right here on the little bit, it is taking in intake liquid. These are taking in liquids. So, I mean, they're still all bringing in water, technically speaking, but this is a different liquid resource than this. So, uh, yes, they don't cross-feed between the two. What this particular one is used for, the actual water liquid, is to go in to your ballast tanks to sink your ship. Now, you may be asking, well, we didn't see any ballast tank parts. That's because in this mod, the mod maker chose to add that capability to existing fuel tanks. So every fuel tank, if we close that mod filter there, now has a liquids category in it that is defaulted to zero, so it doesn't take up weight on your vessel, but can go up to a max of a thousand. And if we look at that tank, it has it. If we go down uh, here, that tank has it. Even go down here. Here, that tank has it. It's added the liquid category to most of these. Not all of them, but most of these fuel tanks. And basically, what it'll do, these liquid vents will fill these fuel tanks with water so you sink. And that's how it basically functions. But they also have another function. They can actually exhaust the ballast, or however the wording is on it, basically forcing that same liquid in the fuel tanks out of your vessel so you will start to rise back up to the surface. Now it's a little strange if we uh, go back to the things here. Um, you can, of course, have them on an action group, which is very important. It makes life a lot easier to take these. And you can toggle the intake to fill your fuel tanks. Here's the problem, though. The exhaust ballast is not a toggle. It's a two-stage process. So on one key, so for me, I have it on one, I can toggle the intake to start filling tanks or stop filling tanks. To get rid of the water, though, you first have to exhaust the ballast. Then on another action group, you have to close the vent to stop it from exhausting the ballast. For some reason, Intake is on a toggle, but exhaust is not. I don't know why, but yeah, you just need three keys instead of two. That's basically how it all works. Now let's go see it in practice with a um, slightly poorly balanced submarine that I've built over here. Because one thing you got to remember is uh, with these submarines, they kind of function like they would if they were a jet plane, just underwater. They fly very much like a plane. You just have to sink it first. And so you really need to be balanced to go well. My ship is not very well balanced. It's, it's, it's a little off. And that's being kind by saying a little. So let's actually get this thing into the water, which is pretty simple there. I just need to put it to current, change that to a three, you to a 10, and ooh, uncheck force rotation. And we go to land, and that should drop us right in the ocean here in a moment. Now, as I'm dropping this in the water, my intakes for liquid are closed. If I left them open, we would immediately start to sink, which would not be a good thing. You don't really want to start to sink right off the bat because you kind of want to get control. So I can turn these off. In fact, I'm going to just do a little quick save there just in case I blow things up horribly. 
It's always a possibility with me. And let's actually bring up a couple of things so you can see. So we've got the liquid there in that fuel tank. We've got the liquid there in that fuel tank. Let's also bring up one of my four liquid vents, which again are currently closed. So we're not filling our tanks. And what the heck, we'll bring up the Sea Otter, I think my favorite of the engines. Uh, just because it's kind of a nice middle balance and I like this fuselage size. And so we have all this information. I forgot to pin this one, didn't I? There we go, now it's pinned. And so on my one action key group, we can start filling the liquids. Let's do that briefly, there we go. We now have 0.43 in each, we kind of moved a little bit. But let's drop it some more, 0.74 in each. We've sunk a little bit more. Let's put it to one. There we go. We've almost entirely sunk. Let's uh, lower it a little bit more. We are now officially underwater. And if we wanted to bring this back up to the surface, I could use two to exhaust the ballast. There we go. We now are no longer sinking which is always good. Now I actually probably should turn on my water thrusters here, the liquid thruster blocks, so that we kind of stay a little bit more stable. If, like me, you have an unbalanced ship, these liquid RCS blocks could help kind of take a little bit of that frustration out of your life, which is always good. So let us sort of lower ourselves back down again. So there we go, let's uh, actually toggle it there, so at point two. Now there goes my poor balancing scenario there, so <laughs> let us, uh, oh boy. Let's actually close this one and empty a little bit of that tank, that, uh, Oh no, no, that one being heavier is gonna lower that one more, isn't it? Yeah, I'm always horrible about, about balancing these things. You know what, let's just, uh, Let's start over. <laughs> we're now back at zero! And at zero, we're gonna start shooting back up to the surface, as you can see right there, which is a bad, bad thing. So let me... sort of try... oh, yep, we're gonna explode. I wasn't paying attention to my height. And there we go! And that is why I quick save. <laughs> Perfect! Oh god, I've got to set back up all these again. Well, let's just bring in that one and lower us down a bit. Bring us back underwater there. And yeah, so it's kind of a balancing act to get what you want. If you want to sort of adjust the trim of your vessel, you can close off certain tanks to only fill other tanks. And of course, the heavier that tank is, the more that side is going to go down. And you just kind of adjust until you have a happy equilibrium and are good to go. And once you have your ship pretty much level, you can start filling it up with more liquid so that you drop more quickly to the bottom of the ocean. Now that can, of course, also be dangerous. That's why you do have the exhaust balance to sort of bring you back up to the surface a bit, but it's it's just sort of a balancing act to get all of those working correctly together, and with practice you can do it. I was playing around for a while earlier and I was able to get uh, myself all the way down to the bottom of the ocean without dying. It worked well, but it does take some getting used to, with especially having them on the different action keys. Now as for the engine, it works just like any jet engine in the game, so we can activate it, throttle up a bit, and there we go, we can actually fly a bit more. We are going at about 10 meters per second. We can angle ourselves down to dive a bit more forcefully, or of course angle ourselves up to go back to the surface. Now if you had a sturdier ship, you could probably breach like a whale and do a little jump, get some air, but <laughs> as you guys saw a minute ago, my ship is definitely not that. Oh God, we're getting close to the surface. Dive down, dive down. And uh, yeah, once you just get the hang of adjusting your liquids, making sure you have just enough in the tank to slowly go down or slowly go up, you can fly around quite easily and really enjoy your time. But that 
that is really it for this mod. It's a fun thing, another great addition to the whole underwater ecosystem of this game. I always do love seeing mods like this that do allow you to go underwater and explore the bottom of the ocean. It's always fun, in my opinion. So yes, if you'd like to check out this mod for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description, as per usual. But that is going to be it for today. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode but until that time thank you for watching and as always have a good one